What the human race is suffering from is mass hypnosis. That's where the real level of this conspiracy comes, mass hypnosis. If I, when I was researching my last book, uh, I went to a, a few um, hypnotist stage shows to watch how they worked and stuff. And what they do, the hypnotist, he is implanting a belief in the stooge on the stage in a certain reality, like the person next to them on the stage is naked. There's an elephant in the audience. He's eating a, a, an apple when it's actually a potato. And what happens because of that implanted belief, the, the program interprets reality to fit it. So the guy's eating a potato, but because of the program, it's an apple, his brain interprets the message not as a potato, but as an apple. Therefore, the guy thinks he's tasting an apple. And we are being subjected to that hypnosis all the time to tell us what to believe is real. And I've seen people on stages, they smell things that aren't there. They see things that aren't there because the only place they exist is in their head. And if their head believes it, they will manifest that reality within it. And we talk about people waking up. Humanity is starting to wake up exactly what they're doing. They're waking up from the trance. We don't have to learn anything new. We are infinite. We have to remember what we have been manipulated to forget through the hypnotic trance that we're subjected to. And this is the wake up that's happening. We're waking up from the trance, the elephant in the living room. The reason people don't see the obvious that is obvious to people who've started to wake up, hey, I can see it now, is because the program is telling them something different. The reason they can't see the obvious is the same reason that a computer will not do something you want it to do if it doesn't have the software downloaded to do it. And when we start to wake up, we start to see the obvious. My God, why couldn't I see it before? Because you were asleep. This is humanity. It's in an hypnotic trance, but it's waking up. And what the Illuminati are desperate to do in this Orwellian state they're trying to interpose is to keep us a asleep. And if they can't keep us asleep, then keep us controlled when we're awake. Now, this is a wonderful book called um, The uh, Holographic Universe by a guy called Michael Tolbert. And I'll get into the holographic stuff in a minute because that's important. Why do we see things in 3D? Because that's what we create in our heads. Well, I'll get into it. But he tells a wonderful story in this book, which really sums up where I'm getting, going here. He says that um, his father um, had a party at home and he got a, a stage hypnotist along to do party tricks. Um, he got people to do all the usual stuff. And eventually he's got this guy called Tom and he's got him to do various things by implanting belief, which he then takes to be reality. And at, towards the end, he said to Tom, when I bring you out from a, uh, to a waking state, you're not going to be able to see your daughter in the room. The same time, the hypnotist leads the daughter to stand in front of the guy, so he's looking in her belly. He then brings him out, and he says, can you see your daughter in the room? And he looks around, he says, no, she's not here. He's looking at her belly. The hypnotist went behind the, the daughter, and he put his hand in the small of her back and said to Tom, who's there on the other side, I'm holding something, Tom, what am I holding? Well, he was bemused because it was so obvious he's holding a watch. He says, there's an inscription on it, can you, can you read it? He leans forward, he reads the inscription, he's bleeding daughters here. And people would say, that's impossible, that's ridiculous. That David Icke would say that, it's so stupid. But it's not because the only place that scene existed in its three-dimensional, this is a physical word form, was in his head. Therefore, implanted belief, no daughter in the room. That implanted belief will not read the energy field of, her daughter, of his daughter. It just won't read her because it's perceives that she's not there. There's nothing to read. Because in this holographic movie that we create in our heads, um, the daughter is not there in belief, she's removed from the scene and you can see what's behind her because it's all an illusory holographic scene in our heads where we interpret uh, reality to suit our belief. It's got so silly that we look around and I understand it, but because of the way we interpret reality and we take um, fields of energy and frequency fields and decode them into a apparently physical reality, we look at the world that we live in and my goodness me, does it look solid? Does it feel solid if you smack it? Yeah, but it can't be because it's made of atoms. 
That's what scientists say, it was made of atoms, yeah. Well, an atom is as least solid as you could come across. It's just, what from, from this reality's uh, perception, although nothing is, it's just empty space. As one scientist said, if you take the atom to be the size of a cathedral, then the nucleus in the center of it is about the size of a 10 cent piece. On all these different um, electrons going around the nucleus and all that stuff, they're infinitesimally small compared with the space that they're occupying. The atom is empty. It's as least solid as you can get. And if you go deeper and deeper into the nucleus and deeper and deeper into the electron, you find that they're bloody empty as well. They're illusions. So how can empty atoms create a solid world? Only when we decode reality in that way and in, in uh, identifying who we are, not experiencing, it's good. You know, Leicester City you nearly went down. We've had a good season at the end. It's great. I enjoy the, 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 the things that go on in this world to an extent. But if we identify with who, who we are with them and this world, that's when we get caught in the prison and get caught in the web. Um, what they do with them um, when they're making holograms is you have a laser beam and part of it will get diverted to go across the object you want to photograph, these holographic pictures that are apparently three-dimensional. Another part of the laser beam will go pretty much direct onto the film. The other part of the laser beam will come in, having passed across the uh, subject that you're photographing, and then the two parts of the beam uh, will collide on the photographic film. And what they do is it's basically like dropping two pebbles in a pond and then the waves go out and as they uh, pass over each other they create what they call an interference pattern which is a wave representation of where the two pebbles fell how far they fell how fast they hit the water it's a it's a wave representation of that and what they have when they're creating holographic uh, pictures which are apparently 3d but aren't is they create interference patterns on the photographic film where the two parts of the la uh, laser beam come in and collide. One carrying the vibrational image of the subject that's being photographed, the other one coming virtually direct. And so that's what you see on a photographic, holographic film. It's apparently a meaningless wave of lines that mean nothing. But you fire a laser beam at it in the right direction and suddenly that meaningless what the hell is it becomes a three-dimensional vision to you um, and that's what comes out of the wave pattern and in the same way we are decoding um, vibrational fields like the interference pattern into holographic reality um, in our heads uh, holograms can look incredibly solid and we can feel them and experience them as solid when we look at them. That's a, a hologram too. These are all holograms. That's not, that's the moon. But one of the things that, um, one of the things that happened when I was lying mattress in this darkened room in an ayahuasca state is the moon came up and this voice starts going, the moon, the moon. Poets wax lyrical to the moon. Illusion. And then he said at one point, do you think that's the earth you're lying on now? Illusion. All happening in our heads um, through our perception of reality and other things which I'll come to. All the things that we look at um, are holographic representations which we're decoding from energy fields into um, holographic uh, illusory reality. These are holograms, the earth and Saturn and stuff. And the brain is in incredibly more sophisticated than the process of creating these holograms that you're seeing here. Um, this is a computer um, image of a, of a city, generate image of a city. Again, looks three-dimensional, even though it's not. And that's what we're doing all the time, creating or, or interpreting, decoding energy fields in the brain into a holographic reality. We see them as buildings and street scenes and people but outside of us, they are energy fields, because that's what we are, that's what everything is, energy, consciousness, awareness. What we're actually doing in this world, in effect, is experiencing a virtual reality game, where we're looking into a world and thinking it's, uh, it's real, when it's just an illusory reality that we're creating in our heads. 
Now, one of the amazing characteristics of holograms is that every part of the hologram contains a smaller version of the whole. If you get a, a holographic print and you cut it into four, then you put the laser beam on each of the four uh, quarters. You don't get a quarter part of the picture. You get a quarter sized uh, picture of the whole picture. It, um, an amazing characteristic that no matter how much you play around with it, it will always give you the whole picture, no matter what part you choose um, to, to use. Now, because the body is a hologram, and every part of the body hologram is a smaller version of the whole, that's where alternative healing methods come from, like reflexology, um, acupuncture, and these other healing methods. The reason they can find uh, points in the feet that represent the whole body in different parts of the body, the reason they can find points in the ear that represent all parts of the body, and indeed everywhere else, is because the body is a hologram and therefore every part of the hologram is a smaller version of the whole and that's how this is possible.